food chains. The sun and earth have a very important relationship. Sunshine contains energy that allows life to grow on earth. For example, this cat actually uses energy from the sun to be able to grow and survive. However, it doesn't take energy from the sun directly. The only organisms that are able to take energy from sunshine directly are plants, also known as producers. Sunlight drives an important reaction inside producers called photosynthesis. This is a first step in creating energy from sunlight. From here, the energy gets transferred to insects such as the grasshopper. This is a primary consumer. Then, from the grasshopper, it goes into the next organism, for example a frog. This is a secondary consumer. And finally, the energy from the sunlight that went to the corn, then the grasshopper, then the frog, makes its way to the cat. The cat being the tertiary consumer. So you see, the cat eventually got the energy from the sunlight. And what we have here is a food chain. Now the arrows in the food chain show us the direction of energy transfer. Or in other words, it's showing us who is eating who. Now in a habitat, we can have many different food chains. If we join them together, that creates a food web. For example, here's a food chain that you can find in a particular habitat. We can see that energy goes from the corn, to the grasshopper, to the vole, to the cat, then the wolf, and finally the eagle. Here's an example of another food chain. Here's another food chain in the same habitat. And finally, one more. Now these were all separate food chains. However, because they're all in the same habitat, we can join them together like this, creating a food web. In this particular food web, the eagle is known as the top carnivore, because nothing eats it. So why are food webs so important? Well, they show interaction between different food chains in a habitat. And this is important because it shows how organisms are dependent on one another. For example, what would happen if we got rid of all the cats in the habitat? We can see now that the number of voles will begin to increase because the cat which was previously eating them is no longer there. So therefore, the voles can reproduce and keep growing as a population. On the other hand, the number of wolves might decrease because the food that they used to eat, which was the cat, is no longer there. Let's try another example. What would happen if we were to remove the butterflies from the food web? Without the butterfly, the dragonfly would no longer have anything to eat. So the number of dragonflies would decrease. If the dragonflies decrease, that means the blue tit would also decrease because it only eats the dragonfly. Now you might think the frog might also decrease. Well, it will, but not as much because the frog can now start eating more grasshoppers. Herbivore, carnivore and omnivore. These are three important words that we need to know when talking about food chains. A herbivore is an animal that only eats plants, for example, a cow or a sheep. A carnivore is an animal that only eats other animals, think of a tiger or a lion. Finally, an omnivore can eat both plants and animals, humans for example. Finally, let's talk about how toxic materials can build up in the food chain. Let's say a farmer is growing corn. Now, they want to get rid of those pesky grasshoppers, so they put some poison in the soil. When the grasshopper eats the corn, the poison also builds up in the grasshopper. Let's say this grasshopper has one gram of poison. 
Now, the grasshopper is going to be eaten by the frog. However, the frog doesn't just eat one grasshopper, it's probably going to eat many grasshoppers throughout the day. So, let's say it eats three grasshoppers. Each of them have one gram of poison, that means the frog is going to have three grams of poison built into its body. Now again, the frog is going to be eaten by the cat. Let's say the cat eats three frogs a day, each with three grams of poison. That means the cat now will have nine grams of poison. And this could be fatal for our poor pussycat. So we can see the buildup of toxic materials will have the biggest effect on the final consumer, in this case the cat. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.